always, everyone. I hope y'all are doing well and y'all are safe. I'm so glad you're joining me today. I'm going to be reading Matthew chapter 24 today. And before I do that, I'm going to get into this tea and treats. And then we're going to have a song and prayer. Well, today I'm drinking country peach passion tea. And to pair with that, I have ginger snaps over here. I'm gonna use this hard candy clover honey spoon. I don't know if you guys have ever tried one of these. I'm not gonna be using sugar today. I'm just gonna let this honey spoon dissolve in here. All right, the benefits of this country peach passion tea is that it's great for bones and teeth. It boosts immunity. It's good for detoxification and cardiac health. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for this drink and food, for the health and nourishment of my body, for Christ's sake. I ask that your Holy Spirit fill me with wisdom and understanding as I'm refreshed by your word. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, please agree with me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for being our light in the darkness, our promise keeper. I claim your promise in Jeremiah 30, 17, which says, But I will restore you to help and heal your wounds, declares the Lord. I lift up to you Tamira Tamara. Her back has been hurting and she feels a pinching on her spine. Lord, I ask that you would give her relief from everywhere she is experiencing pain and let anything that is not of you fall off of her right now, God. I bind up anything that has come against her body in the name of Jesus and release supernatural health to her being right now, Lord. I pray for one virtuous woman. I ask that you would protect her, her family, and her house with all the wildfires that are going on out there all around her, Lord. Give her peace of mind and let her know that everything's going to be okay. I lift it to you, Mr. P. Era. He's seeing a shoulder specialist and he's starting physical therapy on his shoulder, hopefully in the coming week. If it's not better in a month, then he's going to um, have to get surgery. So I just pray that everything would go okay and according to your will, Lord, um, with his shoulder pain. And anywhere that he's experiencing pain, Lord, I pray that you would touch, heal, and deliver him right now, Lord. I lift up to you, Destiny Awaits Me, who's experiencing swelling and fatigue due to a vitamin D deficiency and thyroid issue. I pray that when she has her next appointment to see the endocrinologist that they would be able to work all things out for her good. I release energy to her being right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask that you cover her family, bind any wounds, cure any diseases. I thank you that you are the perfect physician, Lord. Release supernatural health to her right now, God. I lift up to you those on the street, Bar, Thomas, Sheila, Vincent, Alton, Raphael, Will, Golden, Willie, Jarman, TJ, Joshua and Israel and anyone that we met and came in contact with out there, Lord, I pray that you would meet their needs, Lord. I also pray that you would protect us as we go out and spread the gospel for you, God. Help us to bring people to salvation, to have a true personal relationship with you. Suit us up for battle and put on us your full armor, God. Allow nothing to touch us, Father God. I pray that no evil spirit will use us as a medium or gateway to make itself into our communities into our homes, Lord. I pray that they would see your light shine so bright in us and run. I pray for people to yield to you in this season, Lord. Mold them and make them after your will. Take what's broken and make it new, Father. I pray for our leaders. I ask that you would bring corrupt governments down, and I pray that you would establish righteousness and truth in our leaders. I pray for children and families and nations all around the world where there is violence going on. Lord, in a world filled with so much chaos and heartache and justice and pain. I pray that they would know how much you care, Lord. I pray against misery and depression. I pray that you would give them a hope and a peace. I lift up to you, Haiti. I pray for all the families of those who lost their lives, 
or wounded and involved in the earthquake, all those who lost their homes, I pray that they would know and feel that you see them, Lord. Help them to see how much you care and are concerned. Wrap your arms around the nation and release your angels to be with all those who need comfort now, God. I pray that they would get all the help and funds that they need, Lord. Send them aid and assistance that they need during this devastating time. Allow your comfort to overtake them. I pray for India, that there will be more people to come to know you. And I give you praise and thank you for all the lives that have been saved already and turned from Hindu to Christianity. I pray for all the desperate Afghans attempting to escape Kabul to flee the Taliban. We're watching a country fall apart before our eyes, Lord. I pray for our prayer warriors to rise up and pray like never before. I pray for your protection for our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan, courage for them to keep their faith in Jesus. Allow the Taliban army to skip houses, Lord. Guard and protect your church, Father God. I pray for victory in Jesus' name and that God will be glorified in the Middle East. I pray for more to come to Jesus during this time. I lift up to you the weak. It can be so easy to give into worry, fear, and despair. But with you, we can find your strength, Lord. We look forward to wonderful things. You are our hope. So my prayer for the week is found in Psalms 46, 1 through 2, which says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, I lift up to you the prayer team. Thank you for leading us, guiding us, and directing us. I thank you for how you speak to us, and I pray that we would continue to seek you like never before. Help us to always put you first place in our lives above anything else. I plead and seal this prayer with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. I'm going to get started reading Matthew chapter 24. Go get your tea, sip with me, go get your Bibles and follow along with me. And please stick around till after the reading. I will have a prayer for anyone who wants to accept Jesus Christ into their heart as personal Lord and Savior. And you guys can repeat the prayer after me if you choose to make that decision for yourself. All right, Matthew chapter 24. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes, and divers places. And these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. 
Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elects from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, he know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day, an hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the son of man be. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Well, this is certainly a great reminder that we have got to be ready for the return of Christ. And I want to pinpoint Matthew chapter 24, verse 5, which says, 
For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And there have always been many deceivers in the church, and they're trying to take us away from that personal relationship with Jesus Christ into religious bondage. And Jesus says that as the time nears for his return, that such deception will become um, much worse. So we have to stand guard of our hearts and our minds during these last days and definitely depend on the word and the Lord to minister a word to us. And if you would like to accept Jesus Christ into your heart as personal Lord and Savior, I did say at the beginning that I would have a video for you to click on after the reading, and I'm going to put a video up right now. And just remember, it's all about the belief in the prayer and having that personal relationship with Christ and wanting to seek Him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. If you would like to make that decision now and put Christ first, even if you are already saved and just want to rededicate your life to Christ and say, Lord, I choose to put you first place in my life. I want to rededicate my life to you and come back to you. Would you please repeat this prayer after me? Just click on this video right here, pray the prayer after me, and let me know that you've done so. And we can talk about that next steps you should take to grow in your faith and walk with the Lord. Remember to hit that notification bell, share, comment, like, and subscribe to Time with Tiffany. Y'all have a blessed day, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Until next time.